Okay, let's take a look at our scapula or shoulder blade, okay? Right off the bat, just to get ourselves oriented to anatomical position, the anterior aspect of the scapula, nice and flat, not too many landmarks to mention. The posterior aspect of the scapula, nice and flat, but I've got this big dividing ridge here that separates the superior and inferior portions. That's how I know this is the posterior part of the scapula. This is referred to as the spine of the scapula, okay? So now that I know that this is posterior, I note on this side, I've got an articulation for the head of the humerus. So if my humerus is hanging down then off of this aspect, this is going to have to be my left scapula, okay? So I've got three major angles. I've got my superior angle, I've got my inferior angle, and I've got my lateral angle, okay? This division, as we mentioned a minute ago, that's the spine of the scapula. Above the spine, I have a depression called the supraspinous fossa. When we do muscles, you're going to see the supraspinatus muscle sits in there, one of the rotator cuff muscles. If I go below the spine, I've got this shallow depression. This is my infraspinous fossa. And again, we'll have a muscle called the infraspinatus that sits in there. That is also part of the rotator cuff. If I look at the ventral or anterior aspect of the scapula, I don't see any division. All I see is this real big, broad, shallow depression. This whole area is my subscapular fossa. And again, I'll have a muscle called the subscapularis, the third of four rotator cuff muscles. If I go in the posterior aspect and I follow the spine and I follow, 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 the spine ends in this big, giant projection. This projection is referred to as the acromion process, okay? This will attach to the clavicle and give us our AC or acromioclavicular joint. If I look at the ventral aspect, I've got this projection that sticks out the front. This projection is my coracoid process. Coracoid with a C, okay? This would be the origin of our coracobrachialis, and we'll also see that our pectoralis minor attaches to this bony prominence. We mentioned that the head of the humerus articulates to this round area. This round area now is your glenoid fossa, okay? And I think that's just about everything that's on our list. We might have the scapular notch on there that we'll find right here, just medial to the coracoid process. But other than that, I think that wraps it up for us, okay?